the only thing we bring to our salvation is our sin. We can't get to God. God has to come to us. God has to draw us or we're lost. And frankly, we don't like it. At least not up front. We don't, we don't like it because we want some say in our salvation. We want our works to count for something, and if not our works, we at least want our belief and our good intentions to count for something. Again, we get uncomfortable with it. But frankly, I think it's really good news. I think it's really good news for a bunch of reasons. I think it's good news because I know myself. I know I would never go to Jesus unless he drew me to him. I just wouldn't. I resonate so deeply with the story of Jonah. You know, Jonah, God calls him, and Jonah does what? He goes the other direction, and God forces him back, and it's good for Jonah. I relate to that because I wanted to run from ministry, and God drew me back, and it's the best thing ever. I'm so glad. God has to draw us to him, and this is good news for little children. It's good for the mentally disabled. It's good for people who can't even summon up belief. It's good for you, and it's good for me. This is really good news that God takes the initiative while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. He chose you. And this argument gets even stronger when you read it in the initial Greek because the word there in verse 44 that we translate as draws, every place else in the New Testament and most other places in, uh, in secular literature of the time, the word draw is translated compels. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me compels them to come. There is a one place where it's translated draws, but, but it's an interesting one. It's, it's uh, talking about drawing water from a well. And it actually makes the point really well because, because what choice does the water have in coming out of the well? Zero. It might not fight it, but it doesn't have a choice, and that's you and me. God compels us to come to him. And again, this is good news for lots of reasons, but one of the reasons is look at how he compels us. He compels us through Jesus. And to put a positive spin on the word compels, Jesus is so compelling Jim Rayburn, the uh, founder of Young Life, once famously said that it is a sin to bore a kid with the gospel. Why is it a sin to bore a kid with the gospel? Because Jesus isn't boring. He's compelling. He's so amazing. There's no one like him. He's worthy of all of our time and attention and effort. He just draws us in. Even people who don't believe in him, who ultimately reject him, admit that he is compelling. He's compelling in his humanity. Why do we celebrate why do we celebrate Christmas? It's so compelling. Why do we celebrate Easter because he's compelling in his death. He's compelling in his love, he's compelling in his wisdom, he's compelling in his his graciousness and his compassion. He's compelling in his divinity where he walks on water and where he calms storms and where he feeds 5,000 people, where he heals people and where he raises them from the dead. He's compelling in what he promises. Have you ever been in a tough situation and heard the good news that there is life, abundant, true, real, eternal life? that exceeds death, that you can be raised up on the last day? Isn't that compelling when you're hurting? That God is with you? That he became flesh to be with you, to save you? It's compelling. The cross, which was meant to repulse us, which was meant to warn people, which was meant as an instrument of terror, is now compelling so much so that we keep one in our churches and wear them around our necks and on our ears. We have them in our houses. Something that was meant to repulse now is compelling because of Jesus. Jesus compels us to come, and he does it through love. 
irresistible love. 